Please welcome President Barack Obama. Vice President Biden, Vice President. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> that was all set up. <laughs> My President, Joe Biden, Vice President Harris. Our dear friend, uh, Madam Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, all the members of Congress who are in attendance today, the members of Cabinet. Uh, it is good to be back in the White House. Um, it's been a while. I confess, uh, I heard some changes have been made <laughs> by the current president since I was last here. Um, Apparently, Secret Service agents have to wear aviator glasses now. <laughs> the Navy mess uh, has been replaced by a Baskin Robbins. <laughs> and there's, there's a cat running around, <laughs> which I, I guarantee you, Bo and Sonny would have been very unhappy about. It. Uh, but uh, coming back, even if I have to wear a tie, which I very rarely do these days. Um, gives me a chance to visit with some of the incredible people who serve this White House and who serve this country every single day. A lot of times out of the limelight, uh, they, they make this government function and they help people in ways big and small. And, and from the outside, sometimes people don't understand just how grueling this is and how many sacrifices people make. Uh, because those of us who are in front of the cameras oftentimes get the credit. Um, but it's a lot of people uh, who are devoted day in, day out uh, to making this country better that matter. And uh, a lot of them are represented here. And that's not just in the West Wing, by the way. Uh, it's also in the residents. Uh, there were a lot of people who looked after our families. Um, that I will always be grateful to. So it's wonderful to be back to say thank you to all of you. Uh, but most of all, coming back here gives me a chance to say thank you and spend some time with an extraordinary friend and partner who was uh, by my side for eight years. And Joe Biden and I did a lot together. We helped save the global economy, made record investments in clean energy, we put guardrails on our financial system, we helped turn the auto industry around, repeal don't ask, don't tell. But nothing made me prouder than providing better health care and more protections to millions of people across this country. So, So when President Biden said he was not going to just celebrate the ACA, but also announce actions that would make it even better, I had to show up. <laughs> I think it's been well documented just how difficult it was to pass the ACA. There, <laughs> there's, you can get a lot of testimony here uh, in case uh, uh, folks haven't heard. You know, as a country, we have been talking about reforming health care for 100 years. Unlike almost every other advanced economy on Earth, we didn't have a system that guaranteed access to health care for all of its citizens. Millions of people didn't have health insurance, often because their employers didn't provide it or because it was too expensive. 
But despite the fact that our healthcare system didn't work well, it was hard to change. Healthcare represents about one fifth of our economy. That's trillions of dollars that are involved. So there were a lot of different economic interests that were vying to maintain the status quo. And because the majority of Americans did have health care, some people naturally worried that they'd lose what they had. The media was skeptical of past failures. There was a lot of misinformation, to say the least, flying around. And uh, it's fair to say that most Republicans showed little interest in working <laughs> with us to get anything done. Uh, that's fair to say. <laughs> but despite great odds, Joe and I were determined. Because we'd met too many people on the campaign trail who'd shared their stories. And our own families uh, had been touched by illness. And as I said to our dear friend Harry Reid, who uh, is missed, wished he was here today because he took great pride in what we did. I intended to get health care passed, even if it cost me re-election, which for a while looked like it might. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but for all of us, for Joe, for Harry, for Nancy Pelosi, for others, the ACA was an example of why you run for office in the first place, why all of you sign up for doing jobs that pay you less than you could make someplace else, why you're away from home sometimes and you miss some soccer practices or some dance recitals. Because we don't, we're not supposed to do this just to occupy a seat or to hang on to power. But we're supposed to do this because it's making a difference in the lives of the people who sent us here. And because of so many people, including a lot of people who are here today, made enormous sacrifices. Because members of Congress took courageous votes, including some who knew that their vote would likely cost them their seat. Because of the incredible leadership of Nancy and Harry, we got the ACA across the finish line together. And the night we passed the ACA, I've said it before, it, it was a high point of my time because it reminded me and it reminded us of what is possible. But, of course, our work was not finished. Republicans tried to repeal what we had done, again and again and again. <laughs> and they filed law lawsuits that went all the way to the Supreme Court three times. I see Don Marilla here who had to defend <laughs> a couple of them. Um, Uh, they tried explicitly to make it harder for people to sign up for coverage. Uh, and let's face it, it didn't help that when we first rolled out the ACA, the website didn't work. <laughs> that was not one of my happiest moments. <laughs> so given all the noise and the controversy and the skepticism, it took a while for the American people to understand what we had done. But lo and behold, a little later than I'd expected, a lot of folks, including many who had initially opposed health care reform, came around. And today, the ACA hasn't just survived, it's pretty darn popular. And the reason is because it's done what it was supposed to do. It's made a difference. First 20 million, and now 30 million people have gotten covered thanks to the ACA. It's, It's prevented insurance companies from denying people coverage based on a pre-existing condition. 
It's lowered prescription drug costs for 12 million seniors. It's allowed young people to stay on their parents' plan until they're 26. It's eliminated lifetime limits on benefits that often put people in a jam. So we are incredibly proud of that work. But the reason we're here today is because President Biden, Vice President Harris, everybody who's worked on this thing understood from the start that the ACA wasn't perfect. To get the bill passed, we had to make compromises. We didn't get everything we wanted. That wasn't a reason not to do it. If you can get millions of people health coverage and better protection, it is, to quote a famous American, a pretty big deal. <laughs> but there were gaps to be filled. Even today, some patients still pay too much for their prescriptions. Some poor Americans are still falling through the cracks. In some cases, health care subsidies aren't where we want them to be, which means that some working families are still having trouble paying for their coverage. Here's the thing. That's not unusual when we make major progress in this country. The original Social Security Act left out entire categories of people, like domestic workers and farm workers. That had to be changed. In the beginning, Medicare didn't provide all the benefits that it does today. That had to be changed. Throughout history, what you see is that it's important to get something started, to plant a flag, to lay a foundation for further progress. The analogy I've used about the ACA before is that in the same way that uh, was true for early forms of Social Security and Medicare, it was a starter home. <laughs> it secured the principle of universal health care, provided help immediately to families, but it required us to continually build on it and make it better. And President Biden understands that, and that's what he's done since the day he took office. As part of the American Rescue Plan, he lowered the cost of health care even further for millions of people. He made signing up easier, he made outreach to those who didn't know they could get covered, make sure that they knew, made that a priority. And as a result of these actions, he helped a record 14.5 million Americans get covered during the most recent enrollment period. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you have an administration that's committed to making a program work. And today, today the Biden-Harris administration is going even further by moving to fix a glitch in the regulations that will lower premiums for nearly one million people who need it and allow 200,000 more uninsured Americans get access to coverage. I'm a private citizen now, but I still take it more than a passing interest in the course of our democracy. <laughs> but I'm outside the arena, and, and I know how discouraged people can get with Washington. Democrats, Republicans, independents. I, everybody feels frustrated sometimes about what takes place in this town. Progress feels way too slow sometimes. Victories are often incomplete. And in a country as big and as diverse as ours, consensus never comes easily. But what the Affordable Care Act shows is that if you are driven by the core idea that together we can improve the lives of this generation and the next, and if you're persistent, if you stay with it, and are willing to work through the obstacles and the criticism and continually improve where you fall short, you can make America better. You can have an impact on millions of lives. 
You can help make sure folks don't have to lose their homes when they get sick, that they don't have to worry whether a loved one is going to get the treatment they need. President Joe Biden understands that. He has dedicated his life to the proposition that there's something worthy about public service and that the reason to run for office is for days like today.